Hi everyone, I'm going to read you The Dog Who Sang at the Opera, which is by Jim West and Marshall Eisen, illustrated by Erica Aller. Pasha was a beautiful dog, and she knew it. Whenever Pasha and her owner, Shirley, took a walk, people turned to look. My beauty makes me a queen, Pasha thought, and stuck her pointed nose high in the air. Shirley worked at, worked at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City, helping singers, playing the piano and helping the singers learn their music. Operas are plays in which everyone sings instead of talking. One day she came home very excited. Pasha, I have wonderful news. We're doing an opera called Manon and we need a beautiful dog on stage during the festival scene. You are going to appear at one of the greatest opera houses in the world. Yes, yes, thought Pasha Gouli, of course. The next day, Shirley took Pasha to the Metropolitan Opera House, the Met, for a rehearsal. There were dozens of people on the big stage. There was another dog, too. What a scruffy thing that is, Pasha thought. What could he be doing here? Looking down her long Russian nose. Oh, no, he's coming this way. That's the other dog. Answered the little dog. My name's Sluggo. What's yours? My name is Pasha, Miss Pasha to you, she replied, turning her head away. Have you ever been in the opera before, Miss Pasha? No, snapped Pasha, but I listen on the radio. Oh, they're great. We've been in three of them. My master Sam is a clown and we do tricks together. A clown dog? sniffed Pasha. What breed of dog are you? I'm a mix, Sluggo answered cheerfully. You're a mutt, barked Pasha. I was bred by royalty in Europe. But you wouldn't understand French. I just said, je suis un reine. You wouldn't understand French. It means I'm a queen. She held her head high. But it's fun being related to lots of different kinds of dogs, answered Sluggo. Oh, look over there. That's the director. The director, asked Pasha. He's very important. He tells us what to do. There was a tug on Sluggo's leash. Oops, the director's going to talk now. I got to go. Bye. The director made a speech and told the singers and other actors where to stand. When he saw Pasha, he smiled and patted her head. Oh, you are so well behaved and beautiful. You must stand next to our diva, Manon. The diva is the biggest star in the opera, Shirley whispered to her. Good girl, Pasha. Pasha looked at Sluggo smugly. I told you I was a queen, she said. In the costume room, a lady put a sparkling necklace on Pasha and gave Shirley a long, fancy dress. Pasha noticed that Sluggo was given a particularly silly-looking um, pointed hat and a ruffle to wear around his neck. The next morning was the dress rehearsal, practicing for the real performance. Everyone loved the big festival scene. As the singers sang, acrobats flipped and twirled behind them, tightrope walkers teetered overhead, and puppets performed on their own small stage. There is a lot going on, isn't there? Sam the Clown came on in a brightly colored costume with Sluggo right beside him. Sluggo wore his pointed hat and walked on his back legs. Pasha was horrified. Sluggo even jumped through a hoop. Can you see Sluggo and his owner, Sam? And can you see Pasha? Next, Manon sang her big song, which is called The Gavotte. Her voice was the most beautiful sound Pasha had ever heard, but that didn't matter. It seemed to Pasha that all eyes were on her, the glamorous wolfhound in the dazzling necklace. That night, Pasha had a wonderful dream. She was on the stage of the Met in a red dress singing. She was a diva. Everyone was applauding and cheering. Brava, Pasha, brava! Opening night came at last. Shirley and Pasha walked to their places on stage. The conductor raised his baton, the orchestra started to play, and the great gold curtain swung open. The audience applauded and Pasha was thrilled. Manon sang better than ever and much louder than at rehearsal. There was more applause and people called, bravo! Then Manon started to sing the gavotte. 
She sang, I walk down the street just like royalty. Everyone looks at me because I am beautiful. My beauty makes me a queen. But that's not the way it is, thought Pasha. I am the queen. Everyone is looking at me. Pasha started to hum along with Mama, quietly at first. <laughs> quietly at first, and then she began to sing. <laughs> Shirley gave a little tug at her leash. <laughs> the conductor looked up. Pasha heard some of the people in the audience giggling and thought excitedly, it's just like my dream. She sang even louder. She sang, giving it everything she had. The louder she sang, the louder the audience giggled. They love me, thought Pasha. She loved being a diva. Her voice blended with Manol's voice and the glorious sound of the Met Orchestra. There was applause, but Shirley quickly pulled Pasha off the stage before she could even take a bow. All the stagehands were laughing. Shirley was giggling too, but she was upset with Pasha. She knelt beside her, looked into her eyes and said, Pasha, Pasha, dogs are not supposed to sing in the opera. Never, ever. The director was not laughing. He told Shirley that Pasha could not be in the opera anymore. No sparkling necklace. The costume lady took it back. While Shirley took off her own costume, Pasha sat down in a dark corner. She had never been in trouble before. She was beautiful. She was perfect. This wasn't supposed to happen. Are you all right, Miss Pasha? Pasha closed her eyes and turned away. This is not a happy time for me. Please, I just want to be alone. Sluggo looked at her, huddled in the corner. I thought you sang beautifully, Miss Pasha. No, no, please go. Pasha opened one eye. You did? You really think so? Honest, Miss Pasha. I thought your high notes were better than Manuel's. Spasibo, whispered Pasha with a slight smile. What's that mean, Miss Pasha? It's Russian for thank you. You're welcome, answered Sluggo. That's English for any time. The next day, there was an article in the paper about Pasha, the dog who sang at the Met. You're famous, darling, said Shirley, laughing. The phone did not stop ringing all day. That weekend, all of Shirley's friends came over, including Sam and Sluggo, and they are invited to her apartment for a concert. With Shirley at the piano, Pasha sang Mozart. Then she sang to music by the Russian composer Tchaikovsky, and everyone applauded politely. But when she sang the Gavotte from Mano, her big number, they all stood and cheered. Brava, Pasha, brava! Sluggo waited until all the people had finished fussing over her. Then he came over. You look beautiful tonight, Miss Pasha. Pasha beamed. Spasibo, she murmured. And you sang better than ever, said Sluggo. I heard Shirley tell Sam that the Paris Opera might be interested in you, Miss Pasha. Oh, Sluggo, you don't have to call me Miss Pasha. I was being silly. Please call me Pasha. Sluggo's eyes shone. I hear we're going for a walk together, Pasha, tomorrow. Now Pasha, Sluggo, Sam, and Shirley go for walks together almost every day. But on Saturday afternoons, Pasha curls up in front of the radio and listens to the live broadcast from the stage of the Metropolitan Opera House. She pretends that she is there once more, wearing her jeweled necklace, standing beside the star. And as she listens, she remembers what a beautiful voice, beautiful voice Manon had for a human. In this book, we are talking about what type of friends Pasha and Sluggo were. Sluggo was a pretty nice friend the whole time. Pasha, though, started out kind of bragging, didn't she? And not being very kind. And I think Sluggo set a really good example. Sometimes when you're kind to someone and you just keep being kind, they eventually realize they should be kind back, even if they don't start that way. Something to think about.